Hi there, I'm Nicola Hahn and welcome to Living a Parental Lifestyle where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. To recover our natural health, regain our rights and freedoms, and I'm Ellen DeHaan. That's a beautiful day in Durango, Colorado. It is 69 degrees, low of 50 tonight, and a high of 76. It's been really relatively cool because of the rain. We've had a lot of rain. Had a fabulous gorgeous. summer. Just yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, especially August has mm-hmm. been nice and cool. While the rest of the country is... Uh, Roasting, yeah, broiling, sure. and boiling. Yeah. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Odyssey channel. Hit the follow button, hit the like button, help our channel grow. And we post on Facebook and LinkedIn also. Uh, if you hit the link below the show notes, you can maximize, maximize your nutrition with products from Mother Earth Labs. It is, these are products that we use to supplement our diet. So check that link out. Now, we look at mainstream news stories about anti-aging, natural health, history, climate, as well as our freedoms, and we do our own analysis. All the topics for today's show are in the show notes and the videos listed below in the description. If you have any comments or questions, just hit the link uh, below the show notes or uh, content uh, comment on YouTube or Facebook or just hit me directly at Nico Dahan at me.com. And that's the intro right there. <laughs> Okay, today we're going to be talking about sugar, as the intro uh, song <laughs> suggested. <clears throat> but first, we're going to be talking about oil pulling, and this is really about uh, mouth health, mm-hmm. which affects Oral your health. whole body. Oral, Oral health, mm-hmm. yes. So, oil pulling. Uh, this is the first article that we have here: a guide on how to do oil pulling and the science-backed benefits. I've been doing this for many years, and I think it really has helped me because I've had some teeth problems from my younger days when I got mm. some teeth knocked out at various different times. And, and when you were a child, a, a young child, and I didn't have access to dental care. No, in the, in the Netherlands, yeah, especially you know during just the after, during the war mm-hmm. and after the war, and of course my parents because of the. Uh, diet restrictions at that time. I mean, nobody had food for the year I was born. They call it the hunger winter. And uh, everybody was burning uh, all the trees and all the fences and everything. And uh, people just didn't have a lot of food. My dad was lucky. He was in the police force and he was also uh, working in the underground. So uh, he was access to food through his uh, underground connections. Anyway, oil pulling. What is oil pulling? Oil oil pulling is the act of taking a small amount of oil, swishing it around one's teeth and gums. And it's a kind of tradition to uh, Ayurvedic. 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 Yeah. That's uh, Ayurvedic. (laughs) Ayurvedic. Yeah. And it's. Which uh, is the uh, India. Yeah. Tradition. Yeah, and it involves completely filling your mouth with oil, holding it, and rather than swishing it around or gargling, you can. There's many methods, but how, how you do it is uh, really simple. You take a t- tablespoon of oil, Set, preferably something Ses- like sesame oil. Yeah, sesame oil is what I use. Some people use coconut oil because it does have some good benefit. Also, uh, those are the two oils that's primarily used for. I f- first discovered this. Gosh, it's been a number of years. Yeah, at least twenty, I think. I've been using it. So, our mouths are host to 600 different species of bacteria which populate, populate the teeth, tongue, soft tissues of the cheeks and palates, as well as our tonsils. The oral cavity further adjoins the esophagus, na- nasal passages, sinuses, and the intrinsic uh, In- intricate, intricate uh, ear cavities. And you can see why bacteria in the mouth is a big deal. Now, of course, many of the bacteria are necessary for a healthy oral microbiome, and many of them can cause problems if left unchecked, yeah. such as tooth decay, bad breath, gingivitis, strep throat, just to name a few. Yeah, streptococcus. is that what it's called? Streptococcus mutans. Yeah, yeah. Bacteria are single-celled organisms in, uh, closed by a lipid membrane. That's a fatty tissue. Uh, these bacteria are attached to the lipid structure. Attracted. But attracted, excuse me. These bacteria are attracted to the lipid structure of the oil, pulls from the oral tissue by adhering to the fat molecules of the oil, then flush the way through the act of pulling and spitting out the oil later on. Yeah, the idea is not to swallow it. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Here are a few simple instructions. Some suggest that swishing 
before brushing, while others suggest brushing after swishing. No, before swishing. So it's some before. The question is, do you swish before you brush or, or after, after you, you brush? brush. Yeah, yeah. and true. and ultimately, I think they do suggest in this article that if you brush after you pull, you could be destroying some of the good bacteria that you just spend time trying to support. Yeah. So they do suggest brushing, <clears throat> then swishing might yeah. might be best. But yeah. You have to just do what's right for you. Yeah, and I usually do it in the morning when I first wake up. All right. Yeah, because doing it on an empty stomach is something you, you should be yeah. doing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I just sit in my massage chair and pull for about 20 minutes and then spit it out, and that's how I start every day. Yeah, in other words, you swish it around in your mouth. You, you uh, I don't know how you describe it, but it's... Uh, well, you just, yeah, use your tongue and swish yeah. it between your teeth. And it just really cleans the teeth well. Think of how oil in the mechanical devices mm -hmm. keeps everything working. I mean, if your car, yes, yeah, so it lubricates it and then gets rid of all the toxins that are in there that you don't yeah. want your it car. Pulls, yeah, it pulls, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's basically Yeah, it so works. it says continue the process for 15 to 20 minutes until the oil has become thin and whitish. And when you start, you might want to start with just five minutes or yeah. whatever you're comfortable with yeah, and work your way up. Yeah, sometimes comfortable with having something mm -hmm. in your mouth for 20 minutes, so it takes a little getting used to. But uh, well, traditionally, uh, the best oil, they say, is sesame oil. Oh, wait, just yep. one second here. Then it says spit out the oil in the trash or the toilet rather than down the drain. Yeah. Don't to avoid, clog the drain. You yeah. don't want to clog it. And <clears throat> don't swallow it and rinse your mouth with warm water after yeah. you spit it out. So traditionally, they've been using sesame oil. It's known as the king of oils due to its rich nutritional value and versatility. Also, using coconut oil has been popular because of antimicrobial benefits and its lauric acid content. Now, there is an ad in here for a particular product that yeah. this company does. And they have a uh, couple of video. Now there's some there's some good information. Yeah, so the, some of the benefits of oil pulling is first fresh breath. You'll notice that your mouth feels feels really clean. Mm -hmm. It's very healthy for your teeth and your gums. So one of the bacteria found in oral uh, in the oral cavity, which is uh, Streptococcus. Step Streptococcus. Streptococcus mutans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is also one of the main contributors to tooth decay. So in a study, oil, sesame oil pulling group was compared with the uh, chlor Chlor chlorhexidine. That, that was a group that was using a mouthwash with, yeah. with uh, chlorhexidine. And they counted the bacteria uh, after a two-week period, and they found that they, there was a significant reduction in the uh, bacteria after two, one one to two weeks of oil pulling mm -hmm. compared with the... Results of the chlorhexidine. Yeah. It's healthy for your sinuses. Uh, oil pulling is also said to increase the circulation of oral tissues, perhaps bringing nutrients and lymph to the sinus tissue as well. And it says there's more and more awareness of the connection between oral health and our general well-being. Furthermore, there are serious health conditions that may be linked to the bacteria in our mouths, such as endocarditis, which is the inflammation of the heart uh, the, the muscle around the heart, mm -hmm. uh, cardiovascular disease, and even complications of pregnancy and birth. Yeah, this says both oil pulling and tongue scraping are easy and effective ways to assist with the body's detoxification process. Yeah. It says, uh, and of course, oil pulling does not substitute for brushing and cleaning between your teeth, so flossing or using a rocks of brush kind of thing. Yeah. There's a lot of controversy in the last 20 years about uh, actually flossing. Yes. You know, because it does go below the gum line. Right. And uh, could drive things you, into the... Yeah, you could be driving bacteria into there. So uh -huh. you kind of have to make up your own mind whether that's good for you or not. I, I don't just, really... I have a couple of teeth that are very, very close together or slightly overlapping. So about once a month... I'll use a little uh, floss to get, and I don't go all the way down. I'm just trying to get the stuff out from yeah. between the. Those and you can two. use these little brushes the too. The proxy brushes are great. Yeah. yeah. They also help clean some of the plaque and so on. Yeah. Uh, the next article is the uh, efficacy of xylitol for pulling for teeth. And this is something that I recently just started because I do have some 
I don't have really gum disease, but I have some reseeding gums. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this for a while. I do notice the change in the recession. Ah, so good. I've uh, after a couple of weeks, I think you can start seeing some things. And I usually do this at night. And some of what we're going to talk about it explains why and when you should be doing it. Of course, you could do it probably after you eat. Because that's one bacteria. Yeah, there's in. information in here. So what well, is first of all, yeah, what's xylitol? <laughs> yeah, xylitol is a form of uh, extending the mouthwashing, rinsing using. It's liquid. a com go to the next paragraph. Yeah, liquid xylitol crystals. So, uh, it's a form of sugar. It's a non-nutritive sugar sweetener that's in gum and other candies, and it's plant-based. Is it? Uh, yeah, it uh, comes from some fruits. Uh, even corn has it in it, but not to be confused with. Uh, you know, the corn oil type of mm. uh, the... Uh, yeah, just the sugar from the corn. The sugar from the mm -hmm. corn, yeah, it's a different. But the, the stuff that I use comes from the birch tree, the bark of the birch tree. So uh, many uh, over-the-counter mouthwashes only have you rinse for a minute, but all the pulling uh, with rinses mandates that you do 15 to 20 minutes, just like the oil pulling. Yeah. Xylitol uh -huh. pulling. Uh -huh. So xylitol is the mo most commonly found non-nutritive sugar sweetener yeah, in said, gum and I candies. Just... Yeah, you said that. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of it in here too. Yeah, so that explains how do you do xylitol swishing or pulling. Yeah, right? instead of a tablespoon, what you use with the oil, you use one. Teaspoon. And I use a level teaspoon because it does kind of expand. Well, first of all, you want the crystals. Yeah. So that, you know, sort of like they look a little bit like sugar. Yeah, but they, yeah, they're a little bit smaller than sugar crystals. Mm -hmm. They dissolve almost immediately when you start swishing around. Yeah, it says wait for your, put place one teaspoon of xylitol crystals in your mouth. Wait for the saliva to start pooling, which should happen almost immediately. Then swish it around in your mouth for 15 to 20 minutes. Spit it out, but don't rinse. Yeah, that's the difference between oil pulling. And so I do the oil pulling in the morning and in the evening I do it. And sometimes I'll do it after a meal, like this morning after breakfast. I did it while I was waiting for the uh, show to come up. So uh, you did what? Zalatol? Zalatol. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to try to do it as much as possible at first in the f first few months that I'm doing it because I want to... Well, the point is, is xylitol helps, it, it kills bacteria. Oh, it explains it right here. Yeah, so so we want to say, all right, studies have shown that xylitol disrupts the energy production process for the streptococcus mutans, which is the bacteria present in plaque and saliva. And it, uh, because the mechanism is that the, the, uh, the mechanism that the bacteria uses to process xylitol results in a net energy loss. Yeah, it reduces the adhesion of the bacteria to the tooth surfaces, and it reduces the acid production potential. So, Basically, for the bacteria to process the xylitol, it ends up starving itself to death since it lo loses energy from trying to do so. So the final product is not acid producing, so the byproducts are not harmful to the tooth enamel either. They show a picture of a toothpaste, and uh, I use a toothpaste that has xylitol as the first ingredient. It's called xylitol toothpaste. It's by yeah. Himalayan. Yeah, Himalayan, which mm -hmm. is the We get it at the health food store. Yep. And uh, but the, the regular Himalayan toothpaste has xylitol as the second ingredient, so it certainly is good. Yeah, yeah. But well, you wanted something a little stronger. for a long time. Yeah. yeah. You wanted something a little stronger, yeah. a little bit more forward. So here's some of the results you can expect. It slows down bacterial activity. Pulling with xylitol will raise the pH of the mouth from acidic back to neutral. And the deacidifying effect can slow down bacteria activity, which is good, slowing down cavity progression, as well as gum disease. And bacteria are most active at acidic pHs. Yeah, it also freshens your breath, similar to chewing sugar-free gum. Pulling with this should help you freshen your breath. The oil pulling is the same thing. Mm -hmm. We believe that the most important... Uh, According to the article, we, yeah. the we of the uh, authors of the article. Yeah, the most important effect from pulling is that the sugar alcohol is what uh, raises, is that yeah. raises the pH in your mouth back to neutral. And this is what suppresses the oral bacteria activity. Yeah. So, it it it's a uh, it's not a magic 
pill, you know, it, it, it takes so time, and yeah. but it feels good. It freshens your mouth, and, and it help if it helps with gum irritations and with uh, plaque yeah. and uh, general, just generally. Yeah, there's a uh, video I put in here: a sugar that actually heals more than uh, just, just tooth ache, tooth cavities. It's a good article, and uh, yeah, we follow this a, doctor and uh, Ella Phillips. And she explains Ellie. a lot about it, mm-hmm. Ellie Phillips. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's a she was a long time doctor, uh, dentist. Yep. And she found she was experimenting with this stuff, and it's a very interesting. Uh, well, she uses a lot of different methods, and uh, I think you'll find that beneficial. There's the next article is really about xylitol for a healthier smile and a healthier life. So beyond just the oral uh, and fighting cavities and things, it has more benefits. So we'll go into that. Uh, preventing tooth decay uh, decreases the plaque formation, promotes uh, s- saliva production to prevent dry mouth, aids in enhancing mineral absorption for repairing damaged tooth enamel while increase- increasing tooth strength. Yeah, the, I found this article very interesting because it does talk about how this can help restore tooth enamel. Yeah, saliva in itself uh, protects the mouth and teeth. So, Saliva containing xylitol is more alkaline than saliva which contains other sugar products. After taking xylitol, the concentration of basic amino acids in saliva may rise. Yeah, when pH is above 7, calcium and phosphate salts in saliva start to uh, precipitate into the That means come out of solution. Into the parts of the enamel where they are lacking. Thus, soft calcium deficient enamel sites begin to harden again. So, so with what... xylitol, the biofilm that's formed on the teeth is beneficial to the teeth. Xylitol biofilm helps to remineralize deep layers of, of enamel. Yeah, and I mentioned here too that uh, fluoride can do a similar thing, but only on the surface, while the uh-huh. xylitol really goes deep, leading to a complete remineralization. Yeah, and teeth. remember, fluoride is not the best thing in the world to be putting in your body. Yeah, for sure. Xylitol also has been found to increase the activity of white blood cells involved in fighting bacteria and thus may help build immunity, protection against chronic degenerative disease, and have anti aging benefits. It's been proven effective in inhibiting thrush, a serious yeast condition, and other harmful bacteria, including H. pylori which is implicated in gum disease, bad breath, ulcers, and stomach cancer. Yeah, so uh, xylitol, it looks and feels and tastes like ordinary sugar or sucrose, but has 40% fewer cavities. Calories. Yeah, fewer calories. Yeah, you said cavities. Okay, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Reading too fast there. Calories and 75% fewer carbohydrates than sugar. And additionally, xylitol is not easily converted to fat and has almost no effect on insulin levels, which is a great alternative for diabetics, bodybuilders, and dieters. It's also considered safe for pregnant and nursing women, babies, and children. Yeah, and uh, and when they say that, uh, they're meaning in this form of pulling. Yes, not not, eating. Not eating it, Mm -hmm. okay, because there is another article which we'll go over that mentions some other uh, yeah, let's, let's keep Xylitol going. also can help with Crohn's disease. Of course, this is a uh, uh, a um, uh, immune disease kind of. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, and autoimmune disease. I would right, say. right, yeah. but but uh, you know that in not eating xylitol, it it's a matter of degree. You know, you could have a little. Yeah, like I could use it in baking, for example, yeah. substitute for sugar. Yeah. And, uh, I don't but, consume it at all. I don't use sugar, basically. I, I, once in a while, I use, I'll use a little bit of uh, honey. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but, you know, the point is that it's they, some people get an upset stomach. It could also be yeah. an irritant for Crohn's and IBS. Yeah. So, and all um, these diseases that they mention, uh, even not just in this article, but that we read about, mm-hmm. are mostly autoimmune diseases that show different symptoms. It's all about your body not being able to handle what it's being thrown at you, whether it's environmental, because of the water or the air that you drink, or because you're eating... The air you drink. Yeah, or the, <laughs> the water you drink or the air, air that you, you breathe, breathe or right? what you're eating. 
Uh-huh. And uh, your body's trying to fight off that and come to stasis. Inflammation. Yeah, yeah, and it just can't handle the load that it has. And it shows up as Crohn's disease or other... Well, a, lot of, a, a lot of manifestations yeah. of, of your body fighting and uh, Well, there's experiencing... new, new diseases being invented all the time, and they're all basically this. Your body not being able to handle what you're right. throwing at right. it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it says here that xylitol does reduce inter, intraocular pressure that can develop into glaucoma. And uh, when in taken trouble. in small amounts, xylitol can increase white blood cell activity in fighting bacterial infections, helping build immunity, protect against, protecting against chronic degenerative diseases, and it could have anti-aging benefits. Yeah, it can be used as nasal spray or in a neti pot. And it helps reduce the uh, prevalence of prevalence. Uh, prevalence of sinus infections, asthma, and allergies. It also helps the um, uh, decrease the amount of bacteria that may be in the harmful bacteria, those. especially. Harmful. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it says xylitol needs to be the first ingredient listed in whatever whatever form you choose to use. Whether it's mints or gum or rinses or, or toothpaste, toothpaste or, or oil you know, sprays, to get yeah. the maximum benefit. Do not, it says, use products that have added sorbitol or any of the other tols. Because <laughs> they, yes. they work against xylitol, causing it to be less effective. Yeah. And how to use it? Uh, xylitol should be immediately uh, used after a meal or a snack. And it needs to be used daily on an ongoing basis and used uh, at separate intervals during the day. The bosses, the body can only process a small amount of xylitol at a time. So, and, and it, it does, does not replace brushing or flossing. Yeah. Of course, if you're using xylitol as a gum or uh, things that you're swallowing, then well, that, the, this the, really uh, applies. The as video far as... that's in here, the YouTube video, mm-hmm. talks about using the gum. And saying, you know, limit your your chewing to, I think it was 10 minutes, but yeah. you could watch the video. Yeah, because it dissolves. It dissolves and then you don't get any benefit and sometimes it takes away some of the benefit yeah. if you chew longer. Yeah. But uh, it's I good for your th- jaw too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Strengthen your teeth. Mm-hmm. Uh, the most economical way to use it three times a day, day use your tongue uh, cleaner first, next floss, and then use xylitol to rinse and brush. Yeah, and we have just gone through uh, putting how much you use a teaspoon, dissolve it in your mouth, and then swish it around for... Uh, yeah, you can use it for one or two minutes, maybe five minutes, if you want to do the full thing, like the 15 to 20 mm-hmm. minutes. That's definitely going to be the most beneficial. And then you just spit it out and don't rinse. And that's what easiest for me is because I'm not going to be eating anything after that. Mm-hmm. Then I go to bed later on. And you and, can brush your teeth beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or after you, if you use uh, xylitol. The longer you expose your teeth to xylitol, the better the outcome. Teeth will feel as smooth as porcelain. The sensitization of previously sensitized tooth necks, plaque reduction. If you miss the peppermint flavor of your normal toothpaste, you can add a drop of essential peppermint to it. Mm-hmm. I don't really miss that part of it. No. Too. It's, uh, in fact, some sometimes the, peppermint, the mint is too strong. Yeah, and there's some links here to different products. Uh, xylitol from the birch trees. Uh, now, it, d- it does come in, in many, many times it's made from the birch trees. That's, I think, the best form is for your teeth. The fewer, yeah. the purest. You now, get- warning, there is no doubt that xylitol is toxic for dogs. May, do not. Yes, I would say yeah, in general. Yeah, yeah. Gen- well, certainly dogs, but whatever. Don't give xylitol to your pets. Yeah. Some uh, other information here. There's some links to uh, possible side effects, uh, GI upset. Yeah, mostly that's the and this one. This is from digesting it. Mm-hmm. This is not from, from eating it. it. Yeah, right. from eating mm-hmm. it. Uh, and it says here 60 grams at a sitting, uh, children 45 grams at a sitting maximum. Do not use uh, IV nutrition. Uh, so if you have an IV, hmm. you shouldn't be using oh, it. Oh, in, in the IV. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, there's different studies here. Uh, will it help with arthritis? Will it help with Alzheimer's? Things like that. So there's a few links that you can check out before and yeah. or after. And check it out. A lot of this comes from different dentistries, uh, organizations. And dentists so, experience and, dentists. and reports from their patients. Yeah. 
Then there is a next article that says how xylitol affects your teeth. And this yeah. is so that it how xylitol affects your xylitol teeth. Xylitol is a natural occurring compound found in many fruits, vegetables, and grains. Because of its sweet taste, it can be used as a sugar substitute in gums and mist. Mints, uh, we've covered a lot of that. Yeah, well, it has so, okay. fewer how calories. Does, how does xylitol compare to sugar? Okay. It has fewer calories. It has a lower glycemic index, which is a measure of how quickly food raises your blood pressure. And it's uh, 10 times lower than sugar, so that it it's, can be a safe uh, alternative sugar if you have diabetes, and it does not cause tooth decay. Yeah, so there's several food, foods mentioned here. Azotitol naturally occurs in foods such as raspberries, mushrooms, corn, and oats. But the low level of xylitol occurring naturally in foods isn't sufficient to see cavity-fighting effects. It takes about 20 grams of xylitol a day to prevent decay, significantly more than the small amount naturally occurring in fruits, vegetables, and grains. Yeah, when used as an additive, xylitol is typically extracted from birch trees or corn. I always prefer the birch tree formula myself. Yeah. And that's what I look for. Yeah, but you can look at the, look at your, uh, you know, do a little research on it when, you, when yeah. you're picking which thing to use. So the last thing on here is xylitol safe. Xylitol has been approved as a food additive by the Food and Drug Administration since 1986. But watch your intake. High amounts of xylitol can cause diarrhea and intestinal gas. Because long-term, feeding, long-term effects are not clear, you may want to steer clear of xylitol if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. And that's uh, as far as ingesting it is concerned. Yeah. And again, they say it's safe for humans, but even small amounts of xylitol can be fatal to dogs. So keep your xylitol products out of the reach of your pets. If your dog swallows any food containing xylitol, call your vet immediately. And there's a recipe in here for almond cookies with xylitol. Yeah, I found a a (coughs) number I looked up. Uh, I was looking up some al- <coughs> almond, f- I like to use almond flour, I don't use wheat flour mm-hmm. and when I bake. So I looked up, I was just browsing some recipes and there were, there were some that did include something like xylitol. Sure. Mm-hmm. The last link in here has a lot of different studies. Starts with the truth about xylitol, a note from Dr. Ali who ha- is in that uh, in the video, video mm-hmm. that we talked about and then if you go down the list. There's, a, There's a links to a whole bunch of studies regarding different aspects of... Yeah. Uh, talks about prevention of uh, children's uh, dental decay and need for restorative treatment. Oh, this was an interesting one. They cluster randomized trial of xylitol chewing gum preventing preterm birth in Malawi. Yeah. There was a big study done. and uh, Also, uh, xylitol acts as an anti-cancer monosaccharide to reduce selective cancer deaths by way of regulation of the glutathione level. Mm-hmm. So there's a study about that. And so, well, quite a few things, so it's, it's very interesting. Yeah, the effect on in vitro model of oral biofilm, uh, chewing gums, and the caries rates. That's uh, cavities, called oh. caries. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And then uh, alcohol, sugar alcohol carries incidence and remineralization of the caries lesions. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of studies going on with this. Uh, Another one, the effectiveness of xylitol in carcinogenic and beneficial oral steptococci. Uh, Six months high dose xylitol, high risk caries subjects, a two-year randomized clinical yeah, There's quite a bit of information here, yeah. and just one after the other, you can click on the links and read the steps. Yeah, so check out the, all that stuff for yourself. It's, uh, you know, basically, it's a good way to start the day and a good way to end the day for me, and mm-hmm. it's really helped my mouth feel good, and uh, yeah, I, don't have this, I don't have that sensitive feeling anymore mm. when I started doing I this, to have to and use. I had a recommendation of having one of my teeth, which was capped years and years ago and uh, there was a small infection in it and I started uh, I I had kind of lapsed on the oil pulling for Mm. a few years since we moved out here Mm. so I started doing that and that uh, within a I would say 10 days resolved 
any of the uh, recession that was taking place <laughs> and also the sensitive feeling that was taking place. And my dentist says, uh, you know, the next time I go, he says, well, it still shows like it's a little bit inflamed. And he says, uh, you don't want to wait till it's hurting. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, hurting is actually the <laughs> signal that there's something wrong. Right. So as long as I'm not hurting, and he says, well, okay, that's the way you feel. So I have yet to go back. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> hammer in the hand and everything looks like a nail, yeah, so, you know. Uh, I really don't like root canals. I've had. Oh, no. You had I, one. Yeah, I've had one of them, and three years later, they had to pull the tooth anyway. He says, well, at least it gave you three years. It did. Well, I'm <laughs> going to tell him now after three years of not having to worry about this tooth that he wanted to uh, mm -hmm. do a. Do a uh, root canal on mm -hmm. the, at least it's going to give me three years right <laughs> but uh the fact is is that i feel a lot better i have uh, less problems with my mind my mouth and my sinuses which has always given me problems over the years and uh, especially in florida mm -hmm. less here mm -hmm. but uh it's even uh, you know i had a cough uh, i think Two weeks ago, I had kind of... Uh, you had a cough for about three weeks. Yeah. And, and was, it started with the smoke from the fires, the yeah, wildfires. Yeah. And, and then I had laryngitis during the last show a little bit. So yeah. I could move well, real yeah, gravity And you were nasal. And I was nasally. And then uh, slowly but surely, that's gone away. So now I'm not coughing anymore, thank goodness. And mm. uh, it's really helped me. Oh, I so, never actually got infected, which was I felt a good great. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I never, you know, it was just annoying. Yeah, you, exhausting. And you always wonder, you know, do I have an infection in my lungs? Yeah, I, I'm can... listening to his lungs <laughs> to make sure they're not congested. <laughs> yeah. you know? And you think about, oh, do I have COVID now and oh, stuff God, like that? Yeah. So uh, no, but, but it was it cleared. And... Yeah, it cleared up finally. Of course, we were out of town and traveling a little bit, and I had a little bit of it during that time. And, yeah, I'm back. I'm feeling good. So, well, actually, uh, it came in kind of waves. Yeah. You know, you, you had a very serious, uh, not serious, but impactful coughing. Uh, coughing. Well, you know, you, it's when you cough and you can't get it up because mm -hmm. you can't spit it out. It was very, very It was uh, kind of stuck in stressful. there. Stressful. Yeah, it gets yeah. stuck in there. So it gets very sticky. And, and plus, you, your muscles get sore from coughing yeah. and yeah. all kinds of things were going on. And yeah, then no. you improved. And then and I then had the you laryngitis. Had like a, then you had like a relapse. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, it's all cleared up now. Yeah. So that's good. good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this helped a lot. So check it out for yourself. And uh, we appreciate you sticking around. So this that's our show for today. And uh, oh, you want to tell them about your adventures in uh, Sasquatch hunting? Yeah. Yeah. That, that was real good. We went up two to weeks see, ago. Yeah. Two weeks ago, we went uh, up to uh, see Mark in uh, Mark Abel. Mark Abel. Colorado Bigfoot. Yeah. And we also visited your cousin, your yeah, niece. Corey, yeah. and, and uh, his wife, Rhea, and, and, and Jack, Jack and who's I put a video seven, yeah. and uh, Yeah, we Quinn. went out with uh, Mark uh, for a few hours. And the boys went out, so yeah. this time Jack got to go. He was yeah, so that was really seven-year-old. He was and, pretty amazed. And oh, he, he's a, he, well, he's a very bright, very uh, articulate child, and... And he had lots of questions, and he was very interested. Yeah, so we didn't hear any Bigfoot. We heard one whistle. We don't know what that was, but uh, we suspect it might be, you know, uh, something crawling around there. We did see some amazing structures. Yeah. And uh, I where did you put the video? I put it on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, it's in our, okay, in our channel, so you can uh -huh. check that out. And uh, Mark was, of course, describing everything. And this is what this is, and this is what this is. Corey was a little skeptical in the beginning, and I think, but when he started looking at some of these structures and how, how they were 30, 40, 50 mm -hmm. feet in the air, mm -hmm. and some of them were like platforms that you could stand on, but mm -hmm. how do you get a uh, you know 100 uh, foot long piece of uh, branch up 70 oh, feet oh, in the trunk air? Trunk of a tree. Trunk of a tree. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, he, and a lot he of finally the trees, concluded that there was no way that... Yeah, well, a lot of the trees uh, were uh, falling uphill instead of downhill. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, so it was, it was a very interesting trip. And it was great to see Mark again. And uh, he's always a thrill to go out with because he explains it all. And, uh, and he points things out and he yeah, shows you. He yeah. knows where to go, where to take yeah. you. And we're up 12, 13,000 feet. And this was uh, a nice road that uh, we went up to, so we didn't have to go too deep because... Not a lot of hiking. Of, yeah, not a lot of hiking because Jack's seven years old, I think. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he was amazing, and he caught on he, right away. He yeah. held his own. He didn't have yeah. any... He yeah. wasn't tired. He didn't... Uh, yeah. he, well, was, he was pretty amazed, so it was yeah. a great thriller for him. And uh, it's a kind of an annual thing that we do here. 
So, and he was also very excited afterwards because his mom told me that. He told her, you tell everybody, I'm on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was great. Uh, anything else we have going on? Of course, I have my uh, 80th birthday coming up uh, at the beginning of September. Mm -hmm. So we have some family coming in for that and some friends. Friends from out of town. And we basically just local. have an open house. Mm -hmm. So that'll be amazing. And I'm just amazed. This that weekend, we're going to go old, join so. our friends at a lake. Cottage, a yeah, yeah, cabin okay. yeah, nearby, yeah. not too far away. Yeah, about an hour away. Mm -hmm. And uh, tonight we're going to see Dr Drunken Master 2 with some friends. <laughs> we have a local. historical um, movie theater here yeah. in Durango called the Gaslight Cinema. Yeah, and we're and, showing a special... Uh, the uh, Earth Law Center that I volunteer for is uh, having a night, kind of a fundraiser. And it's, you know, $8 a person, so... And uh, we'll see. We'll get it. Just get together and have some fun. Yep. This should be great. <laughs> have some laughs. Yeah. Okay. Then I think that's it, right? Yeah. That's All right. It. We'll see you All next, right, guys. probably next week. And uh, thanks for sticking around. Yeah. Be well. Bye bye.